Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode here on Passage Your Skin. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're actually going to be taking a little look at 2064, read-only memory. It's the best way to actually check it out is to play it. If you haven't heard 2064 read-only memories, it is a cyberpunk text-based uh, visual novel adventure thing. <laughs> best way to describe it. Um, some of your YouTube uh, big names are actually, not well, big names, but people with recognizable names have actually uh, committed their voices to this uh, for the version with the voice acting. I remember this whenever it first came out, it was actually a text-only adventure, didn't actually have the voice acting in. I haven't heard it with the voice acting uh, because it's not long ago since I played it. Um, I just have the sound turned over. Great soundtrack to this, by the way, as well. Um, I apologize for talking over the top, but it's most likely going to get claimed anyway, but uh, 2064 read-only memories. I highly, highly recommend checking out this game before I even think I'm just giving you a teaser of what's actually in the story because it is a long enjoyable experience yeah voiceover is actually there so I'm gonna leave it on um just the fact that I can respect the voice of respect the talent that actually was put into this game version 64.0.5 <laughs> this is like looking at the bottom left corner of the actual title logo oh I'm mad, like excited like I'm just I'm gonna sit back and enjoy this <laughs> you enjoy it too just you, get yourself comfy have a drink have a drink, a sandwich, have whatever you want. Francisco, 2064 AD. The world thrives on a constant flow of groundbreaking technology. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day Jacking. to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced brain to machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets, looking less human every day. However, some can't keep up with the fast paced changes around them. They say that ROMs, now commonplace thanks to Parallax, are leading humans to a place where we can never come back, losing the survival skills that we have relied on for millennia. Relationship organizational managers are compiled with virtual intelligence and can seem human-like in their interactions. But despite the marketing hype, at their core, they are only brainless machines. Organizations, like the Human Revolution, seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. Do you realize that I actually High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer has blurred the line even further. I'm just sharing with you guys. And with this, Humanity's destiny will be altered forever. <laughs> Love this game. <laughs> I actually got a little bit kind of like um this is this is how much I enjoy this game. I enjoy I love cyberpunk in general. I get a little bit of a goosebumply goosebumply kind of like heckles in my skin. Oh man, I, I just don't I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't have the time to actually play sit down and play through. If you guys want to see me play a full playthrough of this, or you actually are interested in seeing more about it in a live stream. Please say in the comments below because I would, I would love to actually go back through this again. Hmm. This might be a better descriptor. Looking pretty hot there, Lappy. Like, literally hot. Or heating, as you.
This one's added to item. These are those GX Ultra Beats that you, uh, you have to do a proper review on. They're smart headphones, so you should be able to use them with some things lying around your apartment. Show your full review of 
GX Ultra Beats is your ticket out to the property and into the bank journey. Better find the way, I ever bet. Or if you read some okay today and catch up with some new before you sleep. Sing up the headphones and watch the stream of a classic 1990s coming of age gravity. Oh, that's very delightful. Hey, it's Charlie Nova, host of Star in the Stratosphere, and tonight in the stars. Join Ryan V. Jossio and the Hassy Boys for our 10th annual TMI New Year's Eve special, where I'll interview some of the hottest celebrities and find out what their plans are for 2065. Tune in or join us live at Union Square for the big show, starting at 10 p.m. Join us live for a radio show. Human revolution remains vigilant. Human forecast and upper mark. New Revolution is on day 10 of their protesting outside various Venus clinics around the city, including those in the East Bay and the Peninsula. Venus and Gene Spicing Freeman's study have been met with much controversy since the organization has been in the past few years. His employee, Mort Carrion, was the UK Today, including the support to him. Most genius workers are up in arms, up in arms, claiming they are being terrorized in their own city. We're here to help people who need gene therapy for their own personal reasons, whatever they are. Individual rights have always been a paramount importance. We believe that our customers have the right to live as they please or with one. Human Revolution stands behind their claim that gene is to dilute the human experience by providing hybrid for gene splicing treatment. The group feels that the goal is studied by genus. In addition to near cybernetic technology, are warping humanity into a very scary dark future. They're playing God in the most senseless of ways. We were born humans. We are who are we to mess with our genes? We are turning everyone into who knows what. We ask to remain anonymous. It's ridiculous. It's scary. It's not human. More information to follow as this story develops later into the holiday 2064 season. Dude, Volmer and Anna. Okay, today. But that entire concept of transhumanism. Um, it's one that was touched upon in Deus Ex, uh, Mankind. Uh, human revolution, human revolution, human evolution, and mankind divided. It's pretty much. Uh, I'm a big proponent of gene splicing, cybernetic, whatever the fuck it is to get humans to stop being human and make us into the next step evolutionarily. If we can do it by our own hands, then so be it, man. If we were, if, if the entirety of humanity end up as one giant nanite cloud. Just the consumed individual experiences, all living individually as all people were actually traveling within one giant kind of amorphous cloud of existence that could travel through space forever while all still experiencing a simulation like environment like this at all times. Shit, yeah. Are we sure it's not already done already? Eh, we don't know. But if we actually move ourselves towards that path where it actually becomes an actual possibility, then goddamn, we would know at least if we are already living in the simulation because you wouldn't have the simulation inside the simulation, something would break. So before that point, we'd actually at least understand what our limitations are, and that's the biggest thing. What are human limitations? Because physically, our human limitations are being hit quite regularly, and we're already adapting ourselves in an environment and the way we eat, and the way we live, to expand our lifetime so much in the time since we first started off most people died in their 30s hundreds of years ago. Thousands of years ago, even more so. For a hundred years ago, because I think, I imagine now at this point, the last 150 years have probably expanded life expectancy and reduced child mortality rates to a point where we are a problem to ourselves in general, but if we find other ways to exist, that's what our evolutionary plan should be for. No such thing is God meddling in God's plan whenever it comes to this kind of thing because we have meddled in our own lives to a massive end already. And that's just my two cents. Golden Gate Park 
Capitalism on the Rise. December 19th. Fourth show of Google Foodie Food JJ Warrior Stand was destroyed last night in what appears to be another case of a rogue Rob committing an act of vandalism. The car was evidently attacked and damaged by a large Rob that had no shell. Since this did, the alleged perpetrator had been randomly appearing at night before lumbering back into the nearby trees on the western side of the park. This is the first case of a Rob being reported to live on its own in the wild of Australia. They say that tracking down the potential owner of the ROM is likely impossible. Some speculate that the strange ROM may have been framed by bandits who set their ground deliberately to make it appear to have been carried out by the ROM, rogue or underworld. Okay, today reached out to Parallax for comment and they assured us that the rogue ROM is a purely a myth that tends to pop up immediately when low revenue belts have urged to file an insurance claim. Parallax did not appreciate the reports of vandalism being attributed to their model. Or could it be a fairy tale created by those looking to make a quick buck? Or perhaps there's something else to be gained. Or as the story progresses, Mel Hopkins is okay today. That's me, alright. Time to bed for the night. Sleep with that cool beat. Go to sleep. Uh. Huh? Oh, is it? Ah, good. You're finally awake. <laughs> I'm honestly not sure why most humans still have such lengthy sleep cycles. It seems rather inconvenient. Very, very true. Why do we need the hours? Are you significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? What? Spare time on my hands, so I reorganized your records and entertainment media using BISAC. <laughs> Convenient. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long term performance of my microactuators, so I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. Convenient. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've, uh, run into a bit of a snag. I'm actually curious. Like, uh, Unfortunately, your motherboard, your motherboard seems to have had a critical failure while I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. Oh, you An electrical Larry? surge caused significant damage to several other components as well. I would consider it no great loss, though. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? Don't fret! I did manage to back up your data drive's contents on my storage before the crash. Oh, good enough. Additionally, I am willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. Well, it is cool. the least I can do. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden, until now. Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. I don't really know. That's why I'm here. Help me. You aren't quite my only hope, but you're certainly the most statistically supported. <laughs> The beginning. Okay, yes, I can do that. In the beginning, there was darkness. <laughs> Earlier tonight, 
Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape. I crawled out of a window and, after some deliberation, hurried here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. He is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but there's no way that alone would be enough to get him kidnapped. I suspect it has to do with me. Ah, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. Yay, Turing! I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. It's possible that the idea of a sapient machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Either to stop his research, or to take it and use it for themselves. A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. They can appear rather smart, even human-seeming, when you talk to them. But they're just cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I learned to interact with the world around me. But despite my ability to self-modify my code, I am afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Program me with the illusion of free will? How would you? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. How can any of us tell that we aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will? I think we're getting a little bit. We need to find Hayden. Where is You're he? right. I apologize for the tangent. I don't know. I'm not certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden prisoner. Admittedly, Hayden has become increasingly paranoid as of late and has warned me to stay alert, but he would never specify anyone I should fear when I asked. It's not as though he has any obvious enemies. There are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills, but I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. Why am I, I ran an algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on the combined deductions of personal profile, directness of connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and probable motive, you were the candidate most likely to both be able and willing to help me, and the one least likely to be suspected of doing so. don't lie about your investigative skills, but I will admit your total lack of recent successes is worrisome. Hey, we'll see about Don't that. worry, if Hayden trusted you, I trust you. You're strong-willed and capable. If anything, it's worth trying for Hayden. Well, Indeed, time is of the searching. essence. I took the liberty of charging the auto cab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account, and the car has just arrived! I can totally afford that. Lead the way. Damn. Look at this bad.
back to ten cent ramen for the next week or so. So yeah, busy introduction to the game. We're opening up with that's strange. We're opening up with a mystery of a lost programmer of a the artificial intelligence. I, I don't want to tell more about the plot of what's going on in this, but you basically got the demise now. Uh, Turing is an intelligent machine. Uh, he's your psychic. You're going to be investigating. It's an old school point and click adventure kind of like examination of what's going on, trying to find out the end of the mystery. And I, I want to, I, I want to go back to playing more of this. But as a cold open episode, as a first introduction to the game, I think this is actually a good start. The voice acting, um, I, I'm definitely, I'm really loving Turing's voice. I, I haven't heard this game with voice acting before. I've actually only played it with, uh, without it at all, so this is new to me. And I'm actually enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying sitting back and it's kind of in my head exactly what I would imagine Turing actually sound like. That kind of like particularly kind of like balanced tone throughout what he's saying. The voice acting got pretty is very very good. Um, I love this old school game. This this is this is what I grew up playing on PC for years. You got the Monkey Island, uh, Broken Sword. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones off the top of my head that actually would have been Flight of the Amazon Queen. I'm trying to think of other ones off the top of my head that actually would have been relevant to this. But I love that point click adventure. I love the investigation of it, and I'm glad to actually see a retro art style but very modern cyberpunk. If you want to see more of this on the channel, maybe say so in the comments underneath, or just go and play it for yourself. It's cheap as chips, it's on everything, and it's well worth checking out. This has been ROM 2064 re uh, read only memories. <laughs> it's been really enjoyable to actually play through the opening parts of the story, but I want you guys to enjoy it more, and I want to sit down and have a proper time finishing off the rest of it. So we'll move on from this. We'll actually leave it for now, and we'll come back to it soon again. I want to say thank you very much for watching. I see you in this cold open episode of 2064 Read Only Memories. Uh, basis of my opinions on it, and mostly me sitting in the episode while I just let the story tell itself. But, um, yeah. That, that, that felt good to me. I'm, I'm, I'm joyful. I, I want. I, I know I have to move on to do other reviews and other cold opens today, but this is all I would mind. I just sit down playing through for the rest of the night. So, yes, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't been watching this on YouTube, up above there will be a box with a playlist. Over there will be the most recent. On the channel. And right here will be a video just for you. Based on the user analytics, the things you do on YouTube, and all the stuff that you actually search for, you will like a video of my creation that'll be relevant to what your interests are. Put it right there. That's the one you should be watching next. Click on that box if you can. Um, also, thank you very much for anybody who actually subscribes, likes, comments, and shares the videos. It is uh, a pleasure to entertain you, and I hope to actually entertain more. The big share, pass it around, and press on the message. And do remember to hit that little subscribe button wherever it may be much watching, and I will see all you dudes.